guys. So this video is going to be my first try at kind of like a, an informational video. I've had a few people comment on my videos and send me messages on Instagram just kind of asking about like different things and one of the things that's come up a few times is the flies that I use. There's lots of guys out there that are going to be a lot more experienced than me but I'm going to share uh, what I learn as I go along. So this video is going to be about the, the three flies that I would suggest that you get started with um, if you want to start fly fishing for sea bass. So the three flies that I'm going to talk about, the reason that I've picked these three flies is because you're going to be able to cover all the kinds of situations that you're going to come across bass fishing pretty much when you're wade fishing from the shore. So you're going to want to cover the surface, sort of subsurface, and then a bit deeper. So we're fishing up to four, maybe five foot of water. So the first fly on my list is a surface fly. Um, this particular one is a gurgler. It's kind of like a giant foam beetle. So it's got this bit of foam on the back, something for a body and something for a tail. And this piece of foam at the front, as it goes along, pushes the surface film and makes a disturbance in the water and that attracts the bass. Um, I've had one smash on this um, and I'm hoping that I can get a few more. Alternatives to the gurgler are poppers basically the same thing. This one's got a little balsa wood kind of head on it with a sort of cone shaped front, concave front, so that when that goes along, it makes little pops in the, in the surface. This one, a bit more basic. It's just a chunk of um, like, yeah, get probably balsa or hard foam. This one's just flat on the front. Again, as it gets pulled through the film, it's going to make a splash. So the next fly I'm going to recommend is a deceiver. Deceivers are kind of sort of bait fish patterns, uh, a bit of bucktail on this one and a couple of uh, hackle feathers for a tail, a little bit of an eye on it. Um, these will sink reasonably fast, faster than you sort of think because there's not much to them. They do cut through the, cut through the water fairly quickly, but they're not going to sink too fast. So you can fish these within six inches of water or a foot of water, probably up to about two feet is as far as they'll realistically fish on my floating line. And then the third and last fly that I'm going to recommend is a clouser. Clousers are fairly simple flies um, invented by a guy called Bob Clouser. Basically it's two sections of bucktail um, tied on either side of the hook around this kind of dumbbell, dumbbell eye here. Um, and then they generally have a bit of flash in them or something like for a body, like a bit of mylar or something. This is my take on a clouser. So this one sinks slightly slower because I've used bead chain eyes rather than a heavy dumbbell. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, essentially it's kind of the standard pattern. I've got a bit of, bit of tinsel around the hook there, a bit of uh, crystal flash in there, and then typically tied with a slightly darker bucktail on the top and the lighter on the bottom, because where the dumbbell eyes are tied on the top of the hook, it makes it fish with the hook point facing upwards. This kind of green one had a couple of fish on that one. That is probably my confidence pattern at the moment. This is sort of like a mini clouser um, that I tied to try and emulate a shrimp. Um, had a take on that one. Um, so that's in the, the orange. I find orange chartreuse kind of green um, they've been working for me since I've started fishing for sea bass. Um, but I think white, blue, orange, fluo green, they're kind of good colours to start with. So yeah, so if you want to get into fly fishing for sea bass, you can't really go wrong with those three flies to get you started um, in a couple of different colour variations for each. Say perhaps go for a light and a dark variation so that you've got the option of the two rather than getting every single colour straight away. When I used to lure fish, I found that there'd be one or two colours that I'd wind up fishing all the time because I had confidence in them and just wound up catching on them all the time. And it's kind of similar for me with flies as well. So with sea bass flies, they're generally a bit bigger than what you'd normally get for trout. The hooks are normally quite a lot thicker, quite a lot bigger, so you're going to want a fly box that can accommodate that. Or you could use it like a lure box, but I use these kind of like waterproof fly boxes and then when you open them up 
that is quite deep inside as well. So there's a lot of space, like this is a, a streamer fly box. Um, so you'd like you would normally put like trout streamers in here, but I use it for my bass flies and there's plenty of space for them. Um, I mean, some bass flies will be bigger than the ones that I typically use, um, but this works perfectly for me. Inside you've got the like slotted foam, like it's got like a slot that goes all the way along rather than individual ones for smaller flies. And then, yeah, I mean, it's waterproof. It's handy. They're normally a tenner or less, depending on which brand you go for, but I'm pretty sure they're all made at the same place. I just put a different badge on them. So yeah, so I hope that was helpful. Um, and if you like this video, um, please let me know in the comments and then I can obviously make more stuff like this, about things like leaders, um, sort of the sort of rods and reels that you'd use for saltwater fly fishing, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, tight lines. I'll see you in the next one.